Hi, today we're going to be looking at Grant et al. 1988, Context-Dependent Memory. Background. Do people remember more information if they recall it in the same context as the one it was learned in? The context-dependent memory effect occurs when the memory of the to-be-remembered information is better when, the tes when tested in the same context in which the material was learned, the matching condition, than when tested in a different context or environment, the mismatching condition. Godden and Baddeley, 1975, studied the effects of context on the memory of deep-sea divers. Some of the divers learn a list of words underwater, and some on land. And then half of each of these groups either recall the list of words on land or underwater. In the matching conditions, i.e. learn on land and recall on land, and learn underwater and recall underwater, the divers recalled more than in the mismatching conditions. Evidence for the context dependency effect has been shown more in recall tests than in rec recognition tests. Grant et al. suggests that the difference in context dependency effects on recall and recognition show that there are different processes involved in the two types of memory. The effect of the context on recall shows that when the information is memorised, cues from the environment are sub subtly encoded and when the material is to be recalled, the same environmental cues can prompt memory, which explains, bet explains better recall in a matching con context condition. In recognition tasks, the subtle environmental cues are outshined by the strength of the to be recognised items themselves, such as such that environmental or context cues fail to have an effect. Aim. Grant et al. aim to investigate uh, context-dependent memory effects on both recall and recognition. They note that students often study in conditions different from those test conditions. For example, students often study in environments that are noisy, such as using music when revising. In contrast, Students are tested in silent conditions. Grant et al. suggested that if context dependency effects indeed occur, then students could be using study habits that do not work in their favour under test conditions. Method. The researchers chose to manipulate background noise as the independent variable, where some participants would hear background noise through their headphones when recording and or learning, and others would not when recording and or learning. Both the test and the study conditions were varied to ensure that it was not the case of that the noise interferes with the encoding of material. The study used an independent measures design. Task. All of the participants read a two-page article, so they were reading for meaning. This was designed to be like learning in the class classroom, testing comprehension of the text. All of the participants were tested on their memory in both the recall and recognition tests. Recall was operationalized by a short answer recall test, and recognition was operationalized by using a multiple choice test. Participants. Eight psychology students from a psychology class acted as the experimenters and obtained five acquaintances each as participants. In total, data from 39 participants was recorded, as data for one participant in the silent study silent test condition was omitted as his scores were atypically low. Uh, these are the test conditions, silent study, silent test, silent study, noisy test, noisy stu study, silent test, noisy study, noisy test. The background noise was played at a moderately loud level in those conditions where the noise was played. The background noise was a recording of noise at lunchtime in a university cafeteria. Some words were audible, but not complete sentences. All participants learned an article on psycho psychoimmunology, two pages each with three columns of text per page. This text was deemed suitable as it was supposedly interesting and understandable for the participants. The recognition test consisted of 16 multiple choice questions, each with four choices to choose from. The recall test consisted of 10 questions, which were made using uh, items from the multiple choice test, which could be easily rephrased as questions. Each, each answer required one word or a short answer. The information in both tests followed the order that it was presented in the original text. The recall test was always administered first, so that the information being recalled was not from the multiple choice test. Procedure. The participants were read standardised instructions that described the, the tasks as part of a class project and which emphasised that they were voluntary. The participants read the article once and were told that they could underline, underline or highlight as they read. They were also told that they would have to complete a short answer and multiple choice task based on the article. In total, the procedure lasted approximately 30 minutes. Each participant was tested individually. There were 17 females and 23 males, I'm sorry about that typo. Um, ages ranged from 17 to 56 years, mean age of 23.4 years. All the participants wore headphones while they read, even in the silent conditions, to ensure that the wearing of the headphones was not a confounding variable. 
In the study phase of the experiment, the instructions were, for this silent condition, participants in this condition were told that nothing would be heard through the headphones as they read. In the noisy condition, the participants in this condition were told that moderately loud background noise was, would be played through the headphones as they read, but that they should try to ignore it. Between the studying and doing the test, the participants were given a break of around two minutes, where they uh, rested without headphones on. In the test phase of the experiment, all of the participants wore headphones again, and the participants were given some instructions. The participants then completed the short answer recall test out of 10, and the recognition test out of 16. The participants were then debriefed as to the purpose of the study. Reading time was recorded, and no difference in the reading time was reported between the noisy and silent study conditions. Results. The results were recorded as a mean number of correct answers out of 10 for the recall test and out of 16 for the recognition test. And as you can see below, these are the results for each uh, type of test. So silent study, silent test, 6.7, and noisy study, noisy test, 6.2. So as you can see, this is um, significantly higher than the mismatching conditions such as noisy test, silent study, which was 4.6, and silent test, a noisy study, which was 5.4. Recognition uh, test, the silent study and silent test was 14.3, and this was exactly the same for the noisy study and noisy test, 14.3. And similarly, for the silent study noisy test was 12.7, and the score for the noisy study and silent test was also 12.7. So this one is fairly easy, easy to remember, so make sure you do remember these results as well, because you might need them. Conclusions there are context dependency effects for newly newly learned meaningful material, with the best performance being achieved when studying and being tested in matching conditions. Therefore, students are likely to perform better in exams if they study for them with minimum minimum noise in the background, because students are tested without noise in the exam. Discussion. Granted, our study showed a context dependency effect in both the recall and recognition tests, whereas earlier studies had failed to show this effect in recognition tests. This may have been because they learned meaningful prose and article in Granted Howell's study and list of words in earlier studies. They refer to a study by Martin and Agleton, 1993, who made novice scuba students learn instructions on, on how to use decompression tables for 10 minutes either underwater in a pool or on the side of the pool in full gear. They were tested in matching or mismatching conditions. This, this study's findings were in line with other findings in the field and thus showed a context dependency effect. The authors suggest that since there was no evidence of a negative effect of noise and performance that students common, students common claim that music does not interfere with their studying may be true. However, since if music isn't ignored when studying, it is no different from background noise, it can be said that it would be best for students to revise without music as exams are conducted in silence. Thank you for watching that presentation, I hope you made notes as I went along, and I'll be making some more videos on the AS Core Studies, so make sure you check those out. Thank you for watching.